The Betts Mystery Sphere is perceived by a number of the world's leading ufologists as the most compelling piece of evidence to support the existence of extraterrestrial life ever released to the public. This bizarre, self-propelling, seamless metallic orb was discovered by Terry Matthew Betts during a massive bushfire on their property on Fort George Island in Florida in 1974. Due to the object's alleged supernatural capabilities, it quickly became the center of fascination amongst the general public, and an object of incredible interest for national scientists, military officials, and many other government bodies. When the family approached newspapers with their find, the story of the mystery sphere quickly spread throughout the international media. After a few weeks of its discovery, the sphere began to mysteriously resonate. The family also alleged it would seemingly be stuck in position on occasion, not able to be lifted or moved, also claiming it would often travel up inclines on its own. It would resonate if anyone played a guitar next to it, or if pushed, would change direction on its own, appearing to be more noticeable if in direct sunlight. Perplexed by the bizarre sphere and indeed the family's claimed experiences, it wasn't long before officials from NASA, the United States military, and the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization came to conduct studies. Intriguingly, their initial research noted that the steel sphere had not been manufactured or indeed tampered with in any way. Navy spokesman Chris Berlinger said to the press at the time, quote, our first X-ray attempts got us nowhere. We're going to use a more powerful machine on it and also run spectrographic tests to determine what metal it's made of. There's certainly something odd about it." End quote. When military officials asked the Betts family if they could take the sphere back to their labs to conduct further research, the family declined. Eventually, it was seized by officials at which point the family claimed it had been exhibiting overwhelming paranormal behavior. Slamming doors without being touched, often emitting a loud, strange music at night, and many other activities reminiscent of traditional poltergeist reports. After its seizure, the sphere was taken to Jacksonville Naval Air Station. When attempting to perform an X-ray, researchers allegedly found their machines weren't strong enough to see into its core. They also revealed that it was capable of withstanding an incredible 120,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. The Navy eventually used a 300 kilovoltage X-ray machine to peer inside. They discovered the sphere contained two items, surrounded by a halo of materials. It also exhibited four magnetic poles, two negative and two positives. Unfortunately, the current whereabouts of the Bet sphere is, predictably, unknown, and it is likely to never be seen publicly again. What is the Bet sphere? A military instrument? An alien craft? Possibly an ancient advanced artifact? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. We often cover the extraordinary yet unexplained ruins that can be found all over our planet. However, as many of these ancient sites indicate, our ancient lost ancestors clearly had substantial advanced understandings we are yet to unravel. We feel, it is clear, that they were indeed technologically superior to us, the modern man. Thus, the question we must ask, just as we are, was this clearly advanced civilization capable of space travel? If so, then why did they not survive the mass exodus, which many feel befell the rest of these lost civilizations? Many people throughout history have been extremely interested in the concept of inhabiting other planets. In many ways, the habitation of other space bodies is a sound strategical contingency for species survival. For in a world at the mercy of other space bodies hurtling through the cosmos, not putting all of one's eggs in one basket will always be a great survival technique, giving the species twice the chance of survival. 
Mars, our nearest neighbor, has been the subject of countless theories involving past civilization, ancient or human, and the focus of NASA's most expensive space exploration missions, spending vast sums in the pursuit of several successful touchdown, and indeed, as mentioned, for a good reason. And just like the many ancient, advanced, unexplained features upon our planet, any past inhabitation, no matter how primitive, would not only be ignored, but logically, much more easily suppressed than the finds we share, which can be explored by us here on Earth. For exactly the same motives as ruins on Earth are ignored, any ancient civilization that could be found upon Mars would meet the same fate. For the proof of ancient civilization, predating that which academia has condemned themselves to dating and explaining as our more primitive modern ancestors' work, has to be suppressed. Academia must protect public confidence for the protection of current, profitable theory. Was Mars once inhabited? Was it inhabited by us? Perhaps the most worrying question surrounding all of this, with academia so hell-bent on appearing correct, Will we, as a species, ever find out? Many of the most astonishing ancient sites found here upon our planet are often just the tip of an archaeological iceberg. Although millions of people flock to such sites as Teotihuacan, Chichen Itza, the Great Pyramids, etc. each year, the actual enormity of the undertaking that these sites indeed once were is unfortunately overlooked walked upon yet ignored year after year. It is no secret that to build the enormous steel and glass structures of today, a foundation of a similar size will be utilized. These foundations allow for such gigantic weights to be placed upon these specific locations, and the sites of the past are no different. Only ever truly appreciated from the air, these gigantic plateaus are all that is left to allow one to accurately calculate the true size of these ancient monuments. The Giza Plateau, for example, although rarely mentioned by Egyptologists or indeed tour guides, is an area of flat sandstone that has for many years been argued as once having been man-made. Many factors go into such a hypothesis, the most important of which being the realization of the requirement to build on this specific site a realization only in its early days, consisting of alignments with celestial pathways and indeed Earth's own energy grids, known in England as ley lines. Indeed, the perfectly flat, efficient vegetation barriers found within Mesoamerican rainforests are also still clear testament to the ancients' past capabilities and the vast undertaking these sites once were. Yet we feel the most astonishing of these ancient plateaus can be found in Chile. Predictably, like the many other clearly manufactured plateaus, it seems this must also be argued as a natural formation. Known as El Enladriado, it is an astonishing ancient site, located atop a 2,300-meter-high basaltic mountaintop. 233 megalithic stones, once masterfully placed in a geometric shape, form an artificial amphitheater atop the mountain, some of the stones being over 10 tons in weight. Three enormous standing stones were found in the center of the plateau. Two were discovered to have been aligned with magnetic north, while a line through one of these and the third stone points to the summer solstice. Interestingly, however, UFO sightings and claims of otherworldly activity is what the site is most famous for. Many sightings of shining spheres going into water or wooded zones without any human explanation. In 2008, Chile's tourism service brought UFO spotting into the mainstream by turning the site into the country's first official UFO trail. Just what is going on at El Enladredo? Who built such an enigmatic ancient site? Why did they choose to build it atop a mountain? And is there really a UFO connection yet to be unraveled? Clearly a bizarre plateau that someone, at some point in history, went to tremendous effort in creating. Also, the attempts to argue it away as a natural formation are all factors we find highly compelling.
There is a very interesting patent recently acquired by the U.S. Navy, one with the potential capabilities to fulfill, or rather stage, a conspiracy theory, which has circled the web and books alike for decades. That being a false flag alien invasion. What's more, this patent also includes a technology that could amplify a voice over a vast distance, as if one were hearing the voice of God himself. It is a laser technology, whose invention, release, and patent, all made under the possible guise or actual real-world advantageous purposes in its military applications, it creates a heat-seeking deterrent, or more specifically, a holographic craft, not only derailing said heat-seeking missiles, but could also explain many of the recent military UFO sightings as this technology has potential only limited by the projectable power of the technology itself. Anything could seemingly appear in the sky as if real. If you add to this the ability to convey a voice over a vast distance, this technology could indeed be used to create a mass false flag incident, in particular a mass UFO sighting, or an attempt to fake a rapture within religious sects. The nefarious possible uses of this technology is wide-ranging, yet one saving grace is the U.S. Navy's declaration of the ownership of such technologies, a move we find somewhat reassuring. Yet, as always, this new patent is not the only reason for the creation of our video today. For although many, if not all UFO sightings now can be written off as a possible holographic operation it does not explain their presence within ancient art. The testimonies and compelling evidence put forth by remote tribes, most notably the Dogons, and their reoccurrence and claim visitation of Earth throughout history, even into the Renaissance, present within certain masterpieces, not to mention the curious illustrations made in the stones of Mesoamerica, all of which predate this technology by centuries and in some cases, millennia. Thus, the question remains, are we alone? A question which we find highly compelling.